And we are live. So everybody, thank you so much for, for joining me today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Warren. I am one of the teachers here at Le Cercle de Long. Today's topic, as I'm sure you all know, we're talking about the news, okay? Fact or fiction decoding today's news. We're talking about fake news today and a lot of vocabulary that is associated with it. Now, to give you some background about myself, um, before I was a teacher, I actually worked as a journalist. I worked as a journalist for two to three years in the, in the UK. I covered a, a wide variety of subjects. I covered things like uh, culture, business, as well as world news as well. Okay, so this is a subject that's very, very close to me. And uh, I guess everybody, you know, it's hard to avoid the news today with all of the terrible events going on in the world. Um, so this lesson, the purpose of it today is to help you decode today's news and look out for fake news. Okay, so I'm just going to share this here. Okay, so we're going to go over um, media types prone to fake news. Um, we'll also discuss um, different strategies to help you identify fake news stories. And then at the end, we will conclude. I'll take any questions, any comments that you have. Okay. Um, this lesson is suitable for B1, B2 level. Um, so... If you could all confirm your levels just in the chat box for me, just in here, that would be fantastic. Sandra, now I, I know your level. I have met you before, <laughs> so that's okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. If you have any questions, any comments um, throughout the, the, the conference, please feel free to write them in the, the chat box and I will get to them soon. Okay. So, introduction, fake news, we've all heard this term, especially a lot over the past few years. It refers to false or deliberately misleading information presented as factual news or journalism. Its purpose is to, you know, deliberately deceive or manipulate readers, you know, viewers, listeners by spreading false information that is not based on you know, variable facts or credible sources. Okay. Some vocabulary for today. Propaganda. Propaganda. Information, especially biased or misleading, used to promote a political cause or point of view. An example sentence. Propaganda is often used in politics to influence people's opinions with exaggerated claims. Fabricated. Made up. A little phrasal verb there. Okay. Made up, not real or true. The story about the moon turning green was completely fabricated and had no truth to it. Polarization, the process by which individuals or groups with differing beliefs, opinions, or interests becomes more divided, often to the point of extreme contrast or opposition. Fake news can contribute to the polarization of society. So it's like divided, but more extreme. Okay. Disinformation. Deliberately false or misleading information that is spread with the intention to deceive or mislead others. The website was known for spreading disinformation about the election campaign. Big news story a couple of years ago, I guess, in the United States, right? <laughs> Misinformation, slight difference with this, okay? So 
Misinformation is the um, uh, dissemination of inaccurate or false information, often unintentionally. She shared the article on social media, not knowing it was misinformation, thinking she was helping her friends stay informed. So a very subtle difference there. Disinformation, deliberately false or misleading. Misinformation, usually unintentional. Now, key points that define fake news. First and foremost, false information. I think that one speaks for itself. Deceptive sources. Manipulative language. Lack of verification. Confirmation bias. Social media amplification. Monetary incentives and polarization. Okay, I'm sure we've all come across fake news in our time. Uh, I think every newspaper is probably guilty of it at some point, whether it's disinformation or simply misinformation. So a show of hands, have you ever believed in a piece of news only to find out later that it was completely untrue? Can definitely confirm this. What about you guys? <laughs> Perhaps, not sure. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> fake news has been around for a long, long time. Okay. We're going to take a look at some fun examples of fake news since the 1700s, the 16th, uh, the 18th century. King George II, here's a fun fact for your history lesson. Back in the mid 1700s, during the height of the Jacobite rebellion in Great Britain, seditious printers printed fake news, even going so far as to report that King George II was ill in an attempt to destabilize the establishment. So basically, they were publishing fake news to make the royal family look bad. <laughs> Life on the Moon. On the 21st of August, back in 1835, the New York Sun published a series of articles about discovery of life on the moon. They were falsely attributed to a well-known astronomer of the time named Sir John Herschel. Another fun fact for you. <laughs> I believe this image might have been used around that time as well. <laughs> Jack the Ripper, the subject of many famous films, especially British films. In 1888, the series of brutal slayings in the Whitechapel district of East London were widely reported. Accounts of the 11 murders, typically involving prostitutes, were described in graphic details in the newspaper and the newspapers of the time. Many tried to profit from the high profile case by spreading fake news. Still to this day, the, the mystery of Jack the Ripper remains in the UK. I don't know if you guys watch any British films or have read any books on this subject, but it's a big topic in the UK. Part number two, media types prone to fake news. Little vocabulary focus once again here. Um, first one here, tabloids. Tabloids. This is the type of newspaper that typically have a small amount of pages short articles and lots of pictures. Quite often they have a bad reputation as well. <laughs> Dubious. 
hesitating or doubting? Dubious. And the last word here, clickbait. Clickbait. Online content with an enticing headline to attract clicks. This is quite a new word. Given the rise of the internet and publishing news online. So clickbait, as it says, online content with an enticing headline to attract clicks. Now, the first media type here that is definitely prone to misinformation and fake news, social media. We all use social media. We've all used Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, now X, all of these sources at one time, right? Now, due to the lack of checks and balances, anyone can realistically post anything. At the, the old newspaper I used to work in in the UK, um, we would quite often say everybody in the world is a journalist now because you can publish your own information at any time. Viral posts can spread information or misinformation rather rapidly. Here was an example not that long ago. Morton Bay. Uh, an area in Australia, uh, Morton Bay tourism has suffered a dramatic hit as locals report being pursued by killer dugongs, which is this lovely looking animal up here. Kind of looks like a hippo or an elephant or something, <laughs> right? Now, this nightmare scenario isn't true. Dugongs are adorable and feed on seagrass. And they certainly do not have teeth like we have in this picture here. This image was uh, turned out to be fake, okay? And it, it turned out they hadn't actually decided to attack Australians either. It's a really good photo though, right? It looks very realistic. <laughs> Some social media statistics in regards to fake news. Now, around 60% of US adults say they've come across false information on social media. It's almost 70%, that's quite a lot, right? Most people have an average level of difficulty identifying fake news online. This is a really difficult thing to do, especially with the rise of AI and what you know AI can do with photography and videos nowadays. It's very, very difficult uh, to identify these sources. Last but not least, social media is the second most popular source of information for news. Now, the million dollar question many governments around the world are asking, how is Facebook or Meta responsible? It's a big question. I'm sure we've maybe seen this in the, in the news as well. Now, a bit of background information. Facebook has um, an intelligent AI system. And what it does is it, it learns people's content habits. And then from there, it curates content that it believes you as the user want to see. We remember back in the day using Facebook in the early, you know, um, 2010 period. Prior to that, you know, we liked and followed pages and we would exclusively see that content. Today, that's not the case. We might see some of it, but you're also going to see content that Facebook's algorithm wants you to see as well, thus allowing fake news to spread a lot more easily. It's also one of the main reasons for the extreme political polarization in the US. 
There is um, a really good writer I like. Um, her name is Celeste Headley. Um, she has a very famous TED Talk, and she talks about this subject in detail. Um, she basically mentions, you know, in the world, really, not just the US, we are probably more divided and more polarized than we've ever been in history. And she blames social media for this as well. And it's quite an interesting point. If you want to look it up, it's um, Celeste Headley, 10 Tips to Have a Better Conversation. You should be able to find it. It's a very popular video on YouTube. Tabloids. Famous one in the UK, The Daily News. Famous one in the States, The New York Post. They often prioritize sensational headlines over factual accuracy in order to sell copies. Now, in the US and in the UK, this is a big problem, especially with the rise of fake news across the board. Okay, Tabloids have been around for a long, long time, especially in the UK, and they have been known to publish inaccurate information deliberately as well. Many celebrities have taken them to court. Uh, many subjects mentioned in these tabloids have also taken them to court as well. As I said, some examples here. The Sun, very popular newspaper in the UK, but it has faced a lot of criticism ever since um, it began publishing. The paper is known for its, you know, sensational, eye-catching headlines, celebrity-focused content, and at times for publishing stories that turn out to be very inaccurate. They have been sued multiple times in the United Kingdom. I think the latest uh, story was uh, Prince Harry in particular and his wife Meghan Markle sued the son not that long ago. The Daily Mail is another one as well. Uh, so this paper has been criticized for sensationalism, particularly in its online editions. Its use of clickbait. Last but not least, the Daily Express has also been accused of sensationalism and occasionally publishing misleading or inaccurate headlines and stories. Now, I did tell you all, I was a journalist, you know, quite a few years ago. I did not work for any of these papers, I promise you. <laughs> Okay, so far so good, everyone? Still with me? Yeah? Great. <laughs> so once again, UK tabloids, they have faced a plethora of criticism over the years for their reporting practices. These include sensationalism, a focus on celebrity gossip, and the occasional publication of misleading or inaccurate stories. Websites with unknown or dubious credibility. Remember dubious, that was one of our words earlier. Often created to spread propaganda or for monetary gains through clickbait. Clickbait websites, one of the most popular ones, I guess, in recent years, which has faced financial trouble recently, is BuzzFeed. Now, I'm not suggesting that BuzzFeed posts fake news, but clickbait, they, they certainly do. An online platform that published uh, content with the primary goal of attracting as many clicks, views, or shares as possible, often using sensationalism, curiosity, or misleading tactics to lure readers or viewers. Satire, okay, <laughs> satirical websites, websites that pre present fake news humorously, 
Now, I have to be honest, I was a journalist, but I do find these websites quite funny. I don't know if you have a French equivalent, um, but for me, I, I find them quite funny. <laughs> the danger they pose, though, is sometimes they can be taken seriously if the context isn't clear, if the person is not familiar with the website and they don't know that it's satire. A really famous one in the UK is News Thump. They have one simple aim, to mock absolutely everyone eventually. To make fun of, to mock. <laughs> Other ones that I particularly like, we, we have what's called the, the Daily Mash. There's another funny example. It's completely satire, just to be clear, it's not real. <laughs> but their content is quite funny. They have a lot of video content as well. Now, strategies to identify fake news. First of all, most importantly, examine the domain. Some unreliable sites will mimic well-known news organizations, but use slight variations, perhaps in the spelling, maybe .com could be something else, in their domain names. Another point that's very important as well, look for the author information. Do you trust the author? Legitimate news articles have bylines with the author's name and can often provide information about their credentials as well. Check the About Us section. Reputable news sites have an About Us section that provides information about the publication's history, its mission, and editorial standards. Review the contact information. Reliable news sites provide clear contact information, including an address, phone number, and email. Assess the design and quality. Professional news sites typically have a clean, organized design, high quality images, and minimal intrusive advertising. and cross-check with other sources. Verify the information by consulting other reputable news sources. Be open to reading lots of different websites. It's very important. Check for clickbait headlines. Sensational, exaggerated, or misleading headlines are common in unreliable news sites. And the last one there, beware of conspiracy theories. Websites that consistently promote conspiracy theories, pseudoscience, or any extreme ideology are probably a very unreliable source as well. Beware of biased or emotional language. So remember, the news should be as neutral as possible. Of course, there are some situations where it's difficult for a news organization to be neutral, um, you know, maybe in cases of you know, genocide or really extreme situations happening in the world. But authentic news, overall, it does tend to be neutral. If it sounds too sensational, it might be fake. Something you can do as well, consult media watchdog organizations. So organize, organizations like Media Bias, Fact Check, um, Snopes and factcheck.org. Um, you know, in the case of, you know, if you see something that is completely false, um, you can report the, um, the newspaper for publishing that. Now, Reading history can be a really valuable tool. I think this is probably the best advice I can share with you, okay? Reading history can be a valuable tool for evaluating the reliability of the news. Getting a contextual understanding of the situation. Historical knowledge provides context, something that's quite often missing in a lot of headlines today. Patterns and cycles. 
History often reveals patterns and cycles in human behavior, politics, and society. And of course, be aware of bias and perspective, understanding that historical biases, perspective, and power dynamics that have shaped the world can help you recognize how to, well, basically how different news outlets may interpret and present the same events based on their own bias. So in conclusion for today, fake news is not a new concept. It has existed throughout history. And since the invention of the internet and social media, it has increased dramatically. Remember that even reputable news organizations can make mistakes or publish inaccurate information from time to time. This happens a lot. Usually what the reputable companies will do is they will include um, a note on the article to say that it has been edited and this is the change that it's made. Practice cross-checking and be skeptical of any news that sounds too sensational or biased. And you can also check the author information, website design, the domain, and read about the history to determine the credibility as well. Bunch of materials for you to look at, okay? <laughs> so um, as we can see here, we have many materials available on our website on the e-learning platform, suitable for A2 and above, looking at the internet, okay? Everyday English from A0 and above, okay? Looking at information, um, website descriptions, etc. cetera. Uh, marketing online, apologies for the format there, um, but yep, marketing online, private data online, and um, last but not least, a YouTube video on newspapers, journalism, TV, and other types of media. So just want to say a quick thank you uh, for, for coming today. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, I will gladly take them just now. No, all good. No, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> uh, I, I thought that uh, fake news were, was inv invented by um, Donald Trump, but <laughs> it's not the case. <laughs> I mean, so, he definitely I <laughs> sensationalized it, right? I mean, I, I'm guilty of this as well. When I hear the term fake news, I, I do think of Donald Trump immediately. <laughs> <as> <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the, the term before, so <laughs> thank you for all this um, explanation. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> what about you, Jeremy? Any any questions from you? Any comments? <laughs> no, very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for the kind words. Okay. Well, everyone. Uh, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for, for coming today. I, I hope you enjoyed the, the mm -hmm. conference. Um, I will be doing another conference next week as well at the same time. Okay, so all you need to do is just register online. I believe there's okay. another one tomorrow as well. Okay. 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 <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Thank okay. you. Enjoy the Bye. rest of your evening. Good evening. We'll see you soon. Okay. Ciao. <laughs> Bye.